18 days from now, an interstellar object is about to slip past Earth, closer than ever, while every major telescope on the planet scrambles for a look. Official channels write off 3i Atlas as just another comet, but amateur astronomers are capturing data that is exposing something NASA will not touch, a sunward tail 1 million kilometers long, impossible physics, and a mounting stack of anomalies that even revised trajectory models cannot explain away. If what is driving this object really is not natural, we will have to rethink what is cruising through our solar system and the clock to catch it is running out. On July 21, 2025, the Hubble Space Telescope captured its first clear image of 3i Atlas from a distance of nearly 4 astronomical units. Now the object is approaching its closest point to Earth, less than half that distance. Every major observatory is preparing for a new wave of data. This time, the geometry is on our side. The minimum approach will bring 3i Atlas more than twice as close as during the iconic Hubble shot, shrinking the gap from about 3.8 astronomical units to just 1.8 astronomical units. That difference is not subtle. At this range, even modest telescopes can resolve finer details in the coma and tail, while Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope are expected to deliver images and spectra at resolutions never before possible for an interstellar visitor. Scheduling time on these telescopes is a global effort. Observation windows are tight, and the object moves rapidly across the sky, so every hour counts. The James Webb Space Telescope plans to capture both infrared and visible data, targeting not just the main nucleus, but the faint extended structures that have drawn so much attention. Ground-based observatories like the Very Large Telescope and Gemini South are coordinating with space-based assets, aiming to build a time series dataset as 3i Atlas sweeps through its closest approach. What makes this opportunity unique is not just the proximity. The post-perihelion phase, when a typical comet would fade and quiet down, is when 3i Atlas is most accessible to Earth-based observers. The geometry means we will catch it from a new angle, revealing features that were hidden or blended together in earlier images. This is not just a chance for professional astronomers. Amateur observers equipped with high-quality CCD and CMOS cameras will be able to contribute images and astrometric data rivaling what some spacecraft could achieve near Mars. As the World-S telescopes swing toward this visitor, the stage is set for a flood of images and measurements, each one sharpening the picture of what 3i Atlas really is. While the world's largest telescopes coordinate observation schedules, much of the most revealing imagery has not come from professional observatories at all. It has come from a global network of dedicated amateur astronomers who have captured some of the clearest, most detailed views of 3i Atlas in its post-perihelion phase. These are not casual snapshots. Many observers use equipment rivaling small professional setups, large aperture reflectors, cooled CCD and CMOS cameras, and precise tracking mounts. Their images are sharp, and they are plate-solved against the Gaia Star Catalog locking down the object's position to fractions of an arc second. One standout contributor is Michael Yeager, who recovered 3i Atlas on November 8, 2025, just days after perihelion. His images, calibrated with Gaia WCS and submitted in FITS format, provided the first high-confidence astrometric points after the comet's solar passage. Other amateurs across Europe, North America, and Asia have coordinated nightly campaigns, sharing raw data, cross-checking measurements, and submitting results to the Minor Planet Center. This flood of community-sourced data has often arrived faster and with more transparency than official channels. In several cases, amateur images revealed faint structures in the coma and tail days before they appeared in professional releases. Each observation comes with a full audit trail, UTC timestamps, exposure details, and plate-solved astrometry. That level of rigor means community-sourced measurements can be trusted and verified, not just admired. The volume and quality of these contributions make it impossible to ignore the role of citizen science in tracking 3i Atlas. As the comet moves through its closest approach, the collective eyes of the amateur community are not just supplementing the official record, 
They are setting the pace and sometimes leading the discovery of features that challenge our understanding of what this object could be. A dust plume stretching roughly 1 million kilometers toward the sun is not supposed to exist. At the distance of 3i Atlas, the solar wind barrels through space at around 400 kilometers per second, about 1,000 times faster than typical comet gas jets, which rarely exceed 400 meters per second. Picture trying to walk into a hurricane traveling at 5,000 kilometers per hour. Any dust or gas ejected from the surface should be swept back instantly, forming a tail that streams away from the sun. Yet for weeks, images have shown a jet not only resisting this onslaught, but holding a coherent, collimated shape that points straight into the solar wind. Physics says this should not be possible without extraordinary force. The ram pressure from the solar wind does not just blow against the plume, it multiplies its effect by the square of its velocity. For the anti-tail to survive, the outflowing material must be at least one million times denser than the solar wind itself. That translates into a staggering mass loss rate. Even conservative estimates put the loss at about 200 metric tons per second for every 300,000 square kilometers of exposed surface. But the visible structure is larger than that, and the plume persists for weeks. Add up the numbers over October and November, and the total mass lost climbs into the billions of tons. Avi Loeb's team, using the most generous assumptions, puts the minimum nucleus mass at around 33 billion tons. Losing several billion tons in just six weeks means 3i Atlas has shed at least 10% of its total mass, possibly much more if NASA's smaller nucleus estimates are correct. For a standard comet, this kind of hemorrhaging would lead to catastrophic breakup, fragmentation, or even complete destruction. Instead, the nucleus remains intact, the anti-tail stubbornly persists, and the object continues to defy the basic rules of comet physics. The math leaves little room for comfort. If the plume is real, and the mass loss is what the images suggest, then the physical budget does not close. The nucleus should be shattered or gone, Yet it is still there, holding together while spewing out a structure no natural comet has ever managed to sustain. The numbers do not just strain the standard model, they break it. Non-gravitational acceleration, often abbreviated NGA, is supposed to be the calling card of a comet near the sun. Jets of gas push the nucleus off its predicted path. But for 3i Atlas, the timeline does not fit the script. Throughout the summer of 2025, the object tracked a perfect gravitational arc. No sign of outgassing, no deviation, just a clean inert trajectory. Then, around perihelion on October 29th, the numbers changed. Suddenly, JPL Horizons reported an NGA of 1.66 times 10 to the minus 6 astronomical units per day squared. That value did not last. As more astrometry poured in, Horizons dropped the number to 4 times 10 to the minus 7 astronomical units per day squared. A few weeks later, it fell again, landing at just under 7 times 10 to the minus 8 astronomical units per day squared. Each revision shaved the anomaly down, nudging the projected path closer to what gravity alone would dictate. These are not trivial adjustments. At the original value, the implied force would require the object to shed more than 10% of its total mass in a matter of weeks, on top of the billions of tons already lost to the anti-tail and sunward jets. The math is relentless. With cometary gas moving at just 0.4 km per second, every bit of acceleration demands a mountain of material. The Tsiolkovsky rocket equation, the same one that governs every launch from Earth, makes it clear Low exhaust velocity means high propellant cost. For a comet, that means the nucleus should be vanishing before our eyes. Now compare that to engineered propulsion. Chemical rockets throw mass away at about 4.5 km per second, more than 10 times faster than comet gas. Ion thrusters, like those on NASA's Dawn spacecraft, reach 30 km per second or more. The difference is not subtle. For the same change in speed, a chemical rocket uses about a tenth the mass, and an ion drive needs just a fraction of a percent. The numbers close elegantly. The observed acceleration, the preserved nucleus, and the persistent jets all fit if the force comes from high-velocity exhaust, not boiling ice. Avi Loeb, director of Harvard's Black Hole Initiative, 
puts it bluntly in a recent interview. If you want to move an object efficiently through space, you use the highest exhaust velocity you can manage. Nature does not do that with comets. Technology does. The question then is whether 3i Atlas is following Newton or Tsiolkovsky, and whether the official models are keeping up with the evidence. The next test comes from the jets themselves. If they are truly engineered, their structure should betray a different logic than anything seen in natural comets. Jets that stay narrow and sharply defined, even as the nucleus spins through a full rotation every 16 hours, are not what cometry physics predicts. On 3i Atlas, the main jets remain collimated and almost laser-like, while the body rotates beneath them. In a typical comet, surface vents or cracks would sweep around with the spin, causing the jets to fan out into broad plumes or to pulse in brightness as they rotate in and out of sunlight. For a single active vent, the expectation is a heartbeat-like rhythm. A jet that flickers or dims as the hot spot rotates into shadow, then brightens again as it faces the sun. Instead, the jets from 3i Atlas show a stubborn continuity. Their structure is steady and their direction holds as if rotation hardly matters. Photometric data backs this up. Observers have measured brightness changes in the coma and jets of about 10 to 20%, locked to the 16-hour spin period. That level of modulation is significant, but it is not the wild swing you would expect if the jets were tied to rotating surface vents. The nucleus turns, but the jets do not break up or fan out. They just keep streaming, as though anchored by something deeper than surface ice. NASA's official line is that most of the brightness comes from the coma, the diffuse cloud of gas and dust that surrounds the nucleus. In their model, the coma is so spread out and chaotic that it should not care about the rotation of the solid core. Yet the observed pattern says otherwise. The brightness swings track the nucleus's spin, hinting at a coupling between the jets and the body that standard models struggle to explain. Dr. Karen Meech, a comet dynamics expert, points out that even in highly active comets, rotation usually leaves a clear imprint on jet structure. She notes that if you see collimated jets that do not pulse with the nucleus, you have to ask if something else is maintaining their direction. That something else could be a persistent internal engine or a mechanism that keeps the outflow steady regardless of surface orientation. This is not just a quirk of imaging. The photometric coupling and the unbroken jet structure add a new layer to the puzzle, one that numbers alone cannot explain. The evidence is not just in how much material is leaving the nucleus, but in how that material behaves as the comet spins. For 3i Atlas, the jets seem to follow their own rules, challenging the idea that what we are seeing is simply sunlight and ice at work. Avi Loeb's group at Harvard has spent months assembling the numbers behind 3i Atlas, mass loss, jet collimation, and the non-gravitational acceleration puzzle. Their findings are not hidden. They have submitted detailed manuscripts to several respected astronomy journals, laying out the physical contradictions in plain terms. Yet time and again, the response from editorial boards has been the same. The papers are declined before even reaching peer review. In some cases, the submissions are dismissed with a single sentence likening the artificial propulsion hypothesis to stories about fairies or ghosts. No opportunity for scientific rebuttal, no technical critique, just a closed door. This is not the first time Loeb has run into resistance. His earlier work on Oumuamua, the first known interstellar visitor, faced similar skepticism, but the situation with 3i Atlas is sharper. Here, the anomalies are not just about odd light curves or ambiguous shapes. The numbers are concrete, mass loss that should shatter the object, jets that ignore the rules of rotation, a trajectory that only fits if physics itself is bent, or something else is at work. The data are public, the math is checkable, and yet the conversation keeps stalling outside the gates of academic publishing. The journal's reluctance is not simply about the risk of being wrong. In astronomy, extraordinary claims often meet a higher bar, especially when they brush up against the idea of non-natural origins. Some reviewers argue that entertaining the engineered hypothesis, even as a mathematical exercise, risks lending credibility to fringe ideas. Others point to past episodes, false alarms in pulsar research, and mistaken signals in SETI that make the field cautious and defensive. 
But this caution has a cost. When gatekeeping turns into silence, it leaves real anomalies unaddressed and hands the narrative to speculation and rumor. For Loeb and his collaborators, the frustration is not just academic. They see a testable hypothesis, a physical mechanism that could be confirmed or falsified by future observations. Instead, the debate stalls at the first hurdle, with journals refusing to circulate the evidence. The result is a widening gap between what the data suggest and what the scientific establishment is willing to discuss. As 3i Atlas approaches its encounter with Jupiter, this silence becomes more than a matter of professional pride. It shapes which questions get asked and which answers the world is allowed to consider. On March 16, 2026, 3i Atlas will pass within roughly 53.1 million kilometers of Jupiter, just inside the planet's hill radius, the invisible boundary where Jupiter's gravity overtakes the Sun's. That margin is razor thin, less than 1% separates the comet's projected path from the mathematical edge of the hill sphere, a region that planetary scientists treat as the solar system's ultimate gravitational parking zone. For spacecraft engineers, this is the spot where probes can linger, undisturbed by the Sun's pull, to monitor Jupiter and its moons. For 3i Atlas, an interstellar visitor on a hyperbolic escape, the odds of threading that needle by chance are vanishingly small, yet the current JPL Horizons Ephemeris puts the closest approach almost exactly at 53.1 million kilometers, with the hill radius calculated at 53.445 million kilometers. The significance is not just academic. As 3i Atlas approaches this boundary, the gravitational tug of war will be at its peak. If the object's trajectory takes it inside the hill radius, even briefly, Jupiter's gravity could measurably alter its course. That change would be visible in the sky, an opportunity for observers to watch physics in action, and for any engineered movement hypothesis to face a direct empirical test. The community is mobilizing for this moment. Networks of amateur and professional astronomers are preparing to track the comet's position to the arc second, submitting time-tagged images and astrometric data to the Minor Planet Center. Templates are circulating. FITS files with Gaia-based WCS calibration, UTC synchronized logs, and standardized submission checklists are being shared. Every observation tightens the uncertainty, bringing the projected path into sharper focus. The outcome is not in the hands of models, but in the hands of observers. If 3i Atlas passes inside the hill radius and its trajectory shifts as predicted, the event will be stamped into the public record by hundreds of independent measurements. Juno, JUICE, and even ground-based telescopes stand ready to record the encounter. The overlay graphics, trajectories, hill sphere, and Parajov are already being updated in real time by the global campaign. This is how science tests extraordinary claims, by watching the sky, collecting the data, and letting the numbers decide what is possible. Right now, a real interstellar anomaly is unfolding above our heads, one that official channels quietly sidestep, even as independent telescopes capture data that does not fit the script. As 3i Atlas approaches Jupiter's domain, the line between natural wonder and engineered intent blurs. What we choose to question today shapes tomorrow's science. Curiosity is not fringe, it is how discovery survives. What do you make of it? Let us talk in the comments.